Welcome to the We Are Libertarians Daily Podcast. I am your host, Hody Johns, and I'm here with my buddy, Dale. Dale, how you doing? Hey, I forgot we were actually recording this, so I was going to make faces at you while you're doing it in the intro, but I'm doing great. How are you, Hody? <laughs> doing well, man. Doing well. Um, so we are going to talk a little bit today. We're going to do some, uh, we're going to do some culture discussion, you and I, and some, some self-help, some self-betterment discussion. So we're not even really talking politics. So I'm sorry if that's not your game. That's but not my game. It's one, but it's one of those that uh, I think is necessary. Uh, I think that we need to develop better people. And I think better people will have better politics as opposed to trying to instill better politics on people that are flawed. Would you agree? For the most part, my inner, my inner statist, uh, my inner totalitarian would want to say we need to uh, take over the state and, you know, impose freedom on everyone. But I know that's <laughs> not really going to work. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, yeah, having, mand it's like that whole mandatory fun thing that they always try to prescribe with, with communism, you know, like, hey, it's mandatory smile time. It's, you know, it's like, well, if you've right. made it mandatory, I don't know how genuine it's going to be. But, uh, yeah, so today we're actually talking about procrastination. We're going to talk about some, uh, what people do with their lives, personal experiences, things that we've learned. Uh, what, what, you know what? You are the master advice giver. I'll let you start off with where you want to take this conversation. Just, well, can we talk about this later, Hody? Yeah. I, I'm really tired today. And no, I'm just, no. No, I'm not going to be feeling it tomorrow. <laughs> God. <laughs> no. Um, well, I guess I did a podcast recently about it. And, um, you know, we, I mean, basically one of the things about procrastination is sometimes you just have to use brute force to combat it. You have to force yourself. And one of the things that I dealt with recently was you can't really see it, but this office was more of a wreck than it was. And uh, you can't really see it because my not guns and books are there. <laughs> but um, but um, I just, I basically forced myself to, you know, through the process of cleaning the floor and um, it wasn't anything, you know, it was just clutter. Um, and then finally I figured out like at the, at the midnight, and I basically just am retelling this podcast all over again, but basically what wound up happening was I got everything done very quickly, but then there was a spot over there that had three sets of papers. Uh, they were my, um, they're my family's old papers from their estates. Um, you know, and I'm just like, I don't want to deal with this. And then I finally got to like this makeshift gravestone that my, my sister had made for, uh, for my biological dad and, and then some old family pictures. I'm like, I didn't break down and cry, but I'm just like, yeah, this is why I didn't want to be doing this. So I kind of, there wasn't just a laziness there. There was a psychological root. And that's one of the first tactics that you can use to combat procrastination is what's the psychological block or what's, why are you doing this? Just ask yourself, why are you waiting on this? What's the block? That's a good point. And I, and I like that you say it's more than just laziness, because I think that procrastination is often more than just that. Of, of course, we never want to do the work. But if we recognize the work is inevitable, and we're smart enough to know that, then it's really not laziness. It's something else. It's, it can be burden, burdensome. Uh, it can be emotional. It can be trying. Uh, I, I, for me, I think procrastination has a lot to do with the first stage of grieving, which is uh, just denial, where you just say, maybe this will all just go away. You know, I, uh, I know somebody um, who is constantly evicted because he's just constantly hoping the landlord forgets. And it, the funny thing is, is most of the time he has money. He just doesn't like submitting it every month and doesn't want to take the steps it take, you know, to get all that set up. And so therefore once a year, he pretty much has to move out and find a new place. That's and a he, strategy. Sorry. It, it, it hasn't panned out for him yet. Um, but I really think, but for me, it's a strong sense of denial that I get from him when I talk with him about it. It's, it's not lazy because he has to move every time he has to pick up his things and move all of his stuff to a different place every time. So he actually puts in a lot more work doing this, but he just gets into this stage of denial of hoping that it will go away, that the problem will go away, that the landlord will stop asking for money and that it'll all just eventually just blow over and everything will be done with. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Has he, I mean, that person, I don't, has he, has he talked about, to you or anyone as to why what what his hang up is on that i um 
I, I, I have talked with him enough to just know that that's like the sense that I get from him, but I guess I haven't delved into the details of it. it it's more so just that I, ha I have the knowledge of knowing but, mm -hmm. that he has the money for it. Oftentimes he even like, so a lot of times what it comes down to is he's missed three, four months or whatever, and then has it. And then he's just like, fine, I'll just pay it. And then he like gets an extra three or four months and just doesn't feel like paying it that month. You know, I, I mean, there's a lot of people who, I shouldn't say a lot, but I know some people who know they need to pay their phone bill by picking up their phone and being like, oh, it's deactivated. I need to pay my phone bill <laughs> every month. And, and it's extra work when you do that. You put it on auto pay, it's no work. And so think about procrastination. Like, like you said, I, I think some of it's laziness and sometimes you just need to, to get yelled at. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times that I think it's mixed with a little bit of denial, hope, hoping that, that it'll all just go away, that it'll delay for a little longer, that you just won't have to deal with it ever, mm -hmm. you know, um, is how I see it. But yeah, the, uh, now your, your project of just cleaning your room what was, I mean, what, seven hours or something? It was a long project. Well, the front end of it, the front of it took me like three hours. The part where I started getting bogged down was between uh, being distracted by some, a very wholesome family game of GTA 5 uh, throughout the day, <laughs> and then jumping back into uh, dealing with, dealing with my files. Um, I finally just decided to say, screw it. I'm going to, I'm just going to dig in and get through these papers and get them archived and then have a, you know, kind of a working file system over here and do it. So, I mean, it was interspersed with not only procrastination, but distraction, which is not a good combination, especially when you let it gang up on you. <laughs> and distraction is just so delightful. They oh, yeah. and, and I think I had just been, well, as I say, the other thing is I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but I think I was, um, I was also distracted by the secret group that I'm also a part of, uh, not to name names, but uh, that was also quite entertaining, as well as GTA. I'll blame the GTA more than the uh, the, the Wall secret. Podcasters chat. Yeah, we'll call. I didn't want to. I didn't want it to be known that it, that's a thing. But yeah, yeah, it's a thing, and uh, I want people to know it's a thing to know because if you're on the research team or if you're contributing to the group and making daily podcasts for us, then you get in that chat. I mean, we have a lot of ways that you can contribute. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's very entertaining, that's for sure. Uh, we usually have everything ironed out and, uh, you know, the, the, the podcast itself is the suit and tie. You know, that chat is, is, the, is the before and after party, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so if you ever wanna see us dress down, then that that's definitely the place to be. So I'm sure that was enlightening to you. Oh, it was hilarious. Oh, it was it was great. It's great. Yeah, and and at least you can personally attest that we have a, a lot of different viewpoints on the network. Yeah. Yeah. That's saying the least. And and they don't feel mildly about their opinions, right? No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. We'll 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 talk to, we'll talk about some more of this offline. But yeah. Sure. So what about um? So what about you? What have you been? battling with procrastination wise if you don't mind me asking so i'm sharing my <laughs> most <laughs> feelings <laughs> you know uh so i'm trying to think of um right now now here's the thing is one of the reasons we're talking about this is because i have developed some good strategies and and helpful things uh here's a real easy one is just dieting and weight loss i Put it off and put it off and knew I was a little overweight, knew I was a little overweight. And I think everybody gets that wake up call at some point. Oh, I'm yeah. glad that mine is not was not a heart attack, right? But at about 244 pounds, I actually got three about one inch long red stretch marks on my gut. And for me, I was just oh, like you pregnant. I was horrified, man. I looked right. like it. Might as well have been. <laughs> I'm getting that fat anyway, you know, I might as well give birth to something. I mean, I, I, you know what, the only thing I was giving birth to was a lot of junk food and a lot of garbage. Right. And the thing is, is I had, I mean, the, it was a slow gain. I mean, we're talking from 200 to 244 with a few times of maybe dieting for like, you know, a month or two here or there. But that process of going up that high, mm -hmm. 200's where I should be at. 244 is way too heavy. So for me, the process of going from that 200 to 244 was like a five-year-long process. I probably had wake-up calls along the way. I could no longer dunk a basketball 
uh, I, you know, I remember not being able to do that after being able to do that for a long time. And, and we talked about this last episode, you and I together, but you'll have friends that'll just say, oh, you're just getting old. Don't worry about it. Everybody's got a little muffin top. It's fine. It's fine. You get encouragement because they love you, right? And they want you to feel good about yourself. But it really is like not helpful because it just encourages me to say, oh, nope, nobody cares that I can't dunk a basketball anymore. That's awesome. It used to be one of those like really cool things that my little 5'11 white self could do. And now it's, you know, it's something that I can't do, but all my reinforcement was, hey, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You've always got the footage that'll live forever. And so, I mean, that's just becoming unathletic, but, that, but then it's slowly journeyed into getting fat, right? right. Being overweight being obese yes it was never grotesque you're never going to get any pictures of me with somebody uh what do they always do take the wet washcloth under one roll you know with my significant other wiping my butt for me or something they're, they're, yeah thankfully it never got that bad and my wake-up call was earlier but that stretch marks those were my wake-up call now me and you we did the the keto thing i got back down under 200 within like within two months and uh, that was an intense, but it was intense and it wouldn't have had to be that hard had I not procrastinated what I knew I should have been doing for a very long time. And, oh, yeah. and so now I'm back at 200 and I'm maintaining, but the lesson I learned there is I just, I mean, the stretch marks are still there. They're, they're lighter now, they're fading, but I could mess myself up do, letting go again just because I procrastinated what I knew I had to do for the last five years. You know, well, I'll help you with that. Hey, Hody, how's your, how are you eating now? What did you eat? Today? Uh, uh, good, good, man. I actually have not eaten today. Uh, so I do, um, my girlfriend does intermittent fasting, which I do with her sometimes. The issue is I'm never hungry when I wake up. I just wake up and I, I go to work and everything's fine. I never drink any, I don't, I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm not a liquor drinker, you know, whatever. I have about one soda a day. Yet, it is, on that it liquor part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Um, but I just, I, I delay it, you know, and, and, and then when it's time to eat, it's time to eat, you know, I, I count calories. Mm -hmm. um, today we got some uh, teriyaki chicken and rice. Um, yeah, which is, uh, which is tough to count calories on rice. Rice is one that you're like, two cups of rice and I'm over like 1,000 already? Yep. And you just want to eat like eight gallons. But, you know, because, you, you know, because I know that about myself, I know that I either measure the rice or I don't have rice. Right. So, uh, you know, we'll see what I do there. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm doing good on that now. And my weight's good. I'm still, I'm still at 200 and I'm trying to do the calorie counting thing. Um, I tell you what, a week of keto will shave that. If I get like 10 pounds overweight, I'll, I'll lose, I'll lose it like that. If I go on a week of keto, that's for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I recently, I will say, I, I really recently share my experience and I was blaming the holidays for this, either the last couple of times we talked or on a solo show, but, um, I went, I just decided I was getting so frustrated. Um, I'm like giving up liquor again entirely. And, uh, went back, went back to carnivore. And, um, I was, I think I had been on the second round. I got up to 215 and, um, knocked that down to 205. So I lost 10 pounds somewhere in there, um, knocking off on the booze. And then, uh, yesterday I went back to full car yesterday and today I went back to full carnivore and I'm already down. I lost, I was down two pounds this morning. And I haven't weighed in. The, I haven't weighed in this evening yet. So it really is amazing. It's yeah, that's awesome. Well, it measures. The, it just shows the power that you have over your weight once you get all the things set up um, to do that. It's just like pushing a button. Yeah. Well, I think you know it's funny that every diet knows that calories in, calories out is how it goes. You know, that's, that's the basic of your weight loss. You know, there's different things that deal with shape. Of course, there's knowing yourself and, and all that. But, well, let's not make this about diet, although Sorry. you and I could talk about keto stuff for forever. I want to put, pose a conundrum to you. Sure. So I had a buddy, um, Nick Irwin from the Enemy of the State podcast. Uh, listen to them if you're not. They're great. Him and David Ballantyne are hilarious. But uh, he, he runs a great podcast over there. But we're talking about it. And I was telling him about one of the problems that I had was I'm very all or nothing. When I decided to clean my house and went minimalist, 
Um, what you're seeing here in terms of my decoration over my shoulder here is about as decorative as my house gets, right? So we are very, the thing is I knew it would go crazy. Is that a Keurig, is that a Keurig back there? We do have one. I'm not sure that that's it, but uh, I do have one. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, when I got rid of everything we're not using, basically making it so that all of our stuff minus furniture can fit, you know, in, in half of, you know, a, not even half a moving van. You know, I, I would be able to fit it plus the furniture in a small moving van because that's all I'm really using. And I knew it and I knew I had to do it, but I waited and waited until finally I was like, okay, I'm doing it. And it took, like a month straight of just organizing, separating it out, clothes. Remember the medicine cabinet was crazy. Which ones we were going to keep, which ones we were going to, you know, which, which one stayed hours a day, you know, but it was because I was very all or nothing. And he suggested it might be healthier to go, go at a slower pace. Now I get the sense when I talk to you, you know, I, I see advantages to both, I guess is what I'm saying. There's a, like a do a little bit a day and slowly progress in the right direction. So long as you're progressing, but then there's, uh, and one of the things that I've always liked about you is your militant mentality, which is like, we're doing this, hoorah, you know, and no, nothing gets in our way. You know, we're, we're going to knock this out right now. Mm -hmm. So is there any shame in picking one or the other? Or is it just knowing yourself well enough? I think it's a combination of knowing yourself well enough. And then it depends on what it is. I mean, and, and for all disclosure, I do have a militant mindset, but I, either regret or am glad that I never served in the armed forces, depending on which. Oh, yeah, Don't send Dale ha death threats, guys. He did not but, serve in the armed forces, please. Well, depending on which libertarian you're listening to, um, <laughs> whatever, or you're is listening. Sorry. Um, I think it's a matter of strategy because there's certain areas where you have to go on the offensive. You can't, you know, and, and I have, very superficially studied military strategy, mostly acquiring that through playing lots and lots of Civilization V, again, procrastination, distraction, but I digress. Um, you have to decide on what, you're, what front you're fighting defensively and what part you're fighting offensively. I mean, for me, uh, in my own life, diet has been um, something that I'm fighting offensively on with keto. Um, and part of that was instigated by the fact that I'm was overdiagnosed as a diabetic now was probably pre-diabetic this whole time um and went and combated that and got it done and got my blood sugar down and all that um that's just i don't mean to keep repeating stories that's one area um another area you know it just depends on the situation entirely i mean if you're in a you know if you're in a financial bind you need to go on the offensive with that when it comes to things more like retirement you know that might be more of a slow going process if you're building a house you're not going to build a house in a day. It just depends on the context and how urgent it is. I mean, even if you just want to get stuff done, just, you know, get after it is sometimes the key. Just knock it out. I think, and I'm, I'm kind of doing a Jordan Peterson and thinking, talking while I'm thinking. I think in terms of things like fitness where it's difficult to work out later in the day, you need to do the hard things first and get them out of the way. Get mm -hmm. to the gym, do your push-ups and sit-ups lift your weights and just do it and get it out of the way. And, and with other things, it, it's highly contextual and yeah. it, it's a person by person thing. Yeah. One of those things that was very impactful on me was knowing that it, it takes a lot of discipline and discipline takes real physical energy. Every time you exert it, every time you say, no, I'm not, I'm going to avoid this. I'm going to avoid that bad thing, or I'm going to, to do in this case, this good thing, like work out. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, clean my room. I'm going to do this good thing. The later you put it off in the day, it actually becomes physically harder to do, even though the task is the same, mm -hmm. your brain compartmentalizes it. And this is kind of where, where it leads me to when I think procrastination is it's hovering over you the whole time. And your brain, even if you say, I'm not going to worry about that today, mm -hmm. stores it up, moves it into like one of your neurons. And it's just like ebbing there. Like, because your brain never forgets it, right? But having that memory actually takes very physical energy. And so you are actually making the task actually physically harder mm -hmm. on your mind at the very least. But, you know, that, but your mind is fueled by, you know, what you put in your body. And so it actually is more physically taxing to do any task later than it is to do it right at this second. And so I, now I understand sometimes you're just at your wit's end. You know, if you've encountered that end of the day, you've given it all, 
there's a point where literally you don't have the energy to dis you know for discipline anymore and you run out of it so like you're talking about is oh, i guess i shouldn't put words in your mouth but you're kind of talk, talking about a plan of action right yeah yeah well i think and it depends on the context i mean um again it, it's highly contextual i mean if it's something that's very urgent I mean, what happens is if you get too overloaded on procrastination, it, it can function like it can function like debt or a wasting disease in that eventually whatever it is you're procrastinating on catches up to you. Or in the case of even if it's not, even if it's like a project, um, one of the things that um, and I re reference this guy, the War of Art, um, Pressfield, Stephen Pressfield, the resistance. I mean, if you procrastinate, that builds up a reserve of resistance and so you have to push further against it um to get the thing done you know it's like two, it's like you could look at it as, as two opposing force fields like two different magnets being pushed against each other mm -hmm. or you can look at it as if you're driving a car um automatic transmissions if you have your foot on both the gas and the accelerator you have to find a way to get your foot off the gas or not get the foot off the um off the brake and on the accelerator. I've only ever driven an automatic, so I have no idea. I wait, just, you, uh, wait, so if, if everybody just switched, if you w decide to become a, a, um, a car thief and they, had an auto, and they had a manual, you wouldn't be able to get rid of it? You wouldn't be able to get it? No, I'd be hosed. They, uh, and the funny thing is all the super nice cars are manual only. They don't even make them with automatic transmissions. So I see those super nice cars in those Bond movies and I'm just like, that could never be me. I'm forever, I will forever drive a middle class or lesser car because You're I can't. You're procrastinating. You're procrastinating. Go get, <laughs> go to your family farm or wherever it is that you're from. Get the Ford Ranger that has the stick shift. Get your brother to take you out and teach you how to run a stick shift while he's talking about social justice and let that be the price that you pay and then learn how to drive automatic or learn how to drive automatic, learn how to drive manual. I don't know. I, uh, I, I look at it a lot like learning how to snowshoe. I'm just hoping that we never encounter another ice age. I just don't feel like it. I just, uh, I'm just and, busting you so much. I'm sorry. I, no, I, I know. Well, I mean, but, it, you know, and to, and to turn this back into something that's, you know, that might be real and tangible for something, you know, for right. somebody. Yeah, we might never snowshoe or we might never need, a, you know, a manual transmission. So those aren't necessarily things that you delay, but you're going to have to pay your bills eventually. Or right. do people with guns will show up at your door if you don't pay your bills at some point. You know? <laughs> like, you're going to have to learn one of the two ways to deal with it, you know? It's in terms of a, a, tr a strategy, and I know I've been I know I've been dicking around a little bit, but uh, in terms of like a strategy, you know, obviously you want to do the hard things first. Like it's a, if it's on a daily process, you know, you have to you get up, you um, and you put you, you develop a daily process. You put it on autopilot. You do your workout, take your shower, go to work, get it out of the way, and then get home. And you don't really think about it. now. Yeah, you're solving problems and doing things while you're working throughout the day. Um, and then you have hopefully some reserve after work to work on your projects and then go to bed. And now sometimes that's easier said than done. Sometimes mm -hmm. other distractions come up, you know, and this is where I, I pull from a variety of toolboxes. If it's something that's going to take you less than two minutes, you know, set aside some time and grab it. I don't necessarily say grab it right away because that does, that does mess with your reserve of energy. If you're just constantly chasing tasks, randomly you know yeah. you want to actually build into your schedule the time to chase those things whether it's paying the bills whether it's you know um filing receipts i'm just looking at my desk right now <laughs> <laughs> organizing your notes here for those of you watching the, uh, <laughs> my 800 h shaped post-it notes that I uh i i did on this last book that we read I told you ever, wait, which last book that you just read? Are you talking about The Road to Serfdom or are you talking about? No, uh, that's for the book club. That's going to be awesome. Uh, I actually am wrapping up. So I'm having a debate later this month with a uh, mutualist, uh, kind of like, so uh, basically a very pro-social means of society, you know, society. Um, still very much, I mean, in fact, the, the founder of mutualism was the first person to ever refer to himself as an anarchist. So it's still very um, anarchy leaning, 
but definitely pro-socialism. Marx actually borrowed those ideas to create communism. So it's funny because you've got these two very antithetical ideas going against each other, and this is kind of the founder of them. Uh, and so I've, I've got all those notes written down. Obviously, I need to organize them at some point. <laughs> But uh, yeah, do it after you get done. Stick it in a scanner. Actually, are those all small? Pe are those all post-it notes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can I can go one by one. One. What yeah. are those for Hoosiers? Are, no, are uh, H for Hody. My mom got them for me. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I've I've got. I mean, there must be ten here, but yeah. Um, so so I guess now we're we're kind of wrapping up. We're kind of getting to the point where we have to wrap it up. Uh. The thing for me with with procrastination is it's always going to weigh you down, and I'd rather play from ahead than play from behind. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm going on vacation in, next week, and I try to put out two podcasts for the Wall Dailies a week. I know that I won't want to do it on vacation. Now, there's a procrastinator part that I'll admit is even still within myself that just says, do your two, take vacation, don't do it at all. That's not even procrastinating. That's just never, not, you know, putting in the work and, and sharing with my audience and giving them the things that they deserve. That's dark side, that's dark side Hody talking. Yeah, that's very dark side stuff right there. Just being like, you know, that's the lazy side and it really shafts the audience and it's not fair to them. It's not fair to our Patreon people that pay for this content, you know, that's, and it's not fair to the listeners that just listen to us and like to share us with our friends to be like, well, my, my host got lazy on my show, you know, so now there's less content. You know, and, and so I've got that and I could all, there's the other part of me that says, well, just do it when you get back, you know, uh, who knows. But the thing is, is, I know myself well enough that that's playing from behind and that's going to loom over me for the entire vacation is thinking about what am I going to do when I get back? I'm going to have to make up for it. And so I'm doing them now ahead of time because, and, and this is really where I want to leave with my final thought on this is it makes your recreational time so much better when you don't have something to do. Amen. I structure my whole week so that when I have a day off, I do nothing. I do nothing, nothing. Zero things done on the two days that I have off a week. And so I work hard. And my days that I work, like today, I am I'm organizing things doing things. I have chores scheduled. I have my laundry. I have, you know, meals that I have to cook and everything like that. Days off, meals are already pre-cooked. It's a pop in the microwave or a heat in the oven, something like that. And because, because I've structured this now, now I, and I think structure is a huge part of this. When you talk yeah. about an attack plan, this is really what it is. It's just to say, I want to make sure that my days off actually fuel me up instead of just or another day that I'm slogging through and I'm dreading tomorrow, mm. you know? And so I can, on my days off, I mean, I would be embarrassed to tell people the, the video games that I play, the books that I read, like it is a huge volume of nonsense. Like hey, it is just, yeah. You've just told everyone what you do on your days off. I would be embarrassed to, to show them the game hours played and the thickness of the books that I will go through in a day. It, it is very, now some of it makes its way into the show because I do read a lot of, you know, liberty or anti-liberty books, I guess, as it were. Um, and I still consider that education entertainment. So that's just right. lucky audience. You got lucky on this one. <laughs> but uh <laughs> But, but for me, it just, I, I would stress that if you don't feel refreshed after a day off, if you don't feel like you got to do everything on a day off and you didn't fully unwind, relax, mm. have everything in order, I would just get there. It's like having a vacation for a whole day, two days a week, where you just say, I don't have to worry about food, clothing, laundry, work, calls. I don't get on social media. You notice my long hiatus. Everything's gone. I'm just deleted. Yeah from the world for those two days and they're oh, yeah. fantastic days. Um, and I think that they really, they charge me up. So that, here's the thing. If you make it so that your days off are totally to recharge, then when you get back to work, you hit work hard, you know, you're so ready to go. And so for me on those work days, I maximize my work ethic. Everybody thinks I have this amazing work ethic and they're not aware that I spend two days a week in total self-indulged debauchery. <laughs> and just, as much as, as debauchery as Mormons get, I know it's not that intense. I don't want to get everybody excited, but yeah. 
Um, well, but yeah, you know, those are my final hoodie. thoughts. And Dale, I you should damn take- ho- I was I was gonna say damn hoodie. I was getting excited when you were talking about debauchery there. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's mostly diet sodas and, and video uh, games and, and posters. Yeah, and and, posters. and baseball cards. Oh, love baseball cards. But uh, Dale, I took like a long time on my final thoughts. So so just give us all your thoughts about procrastination is yours. No, um, I, I mean, my thoughts mainly are it's it's an evil demon that you need to attack it with violence of action. Um, I know I throw that around around a lot as well. Uh, structure is huge. I mean, if you can get yourself into a program, because that's a schedule is literally a program. When you're, you know, you're when you're setting yourself up for that scheduling for, you know, and I would actually like to talk with you more about this offline because I've got other ideas. But um, in terms of being able to put together that regimen because you're writing a program when you sit down with your schedule on your on your day off when you're doing your grand strategy for the week um you know you're you're putting that all together and then you just you run the program and then you might you know there might be an errant thought where you get the um where you might get an error in the code but you can still deal with that along the way um i guess my i guess my really my only final thought is if you're behind on things pick a day make a list and plan your grand strategy and then get the things that you're behind on, get those caught up that let that be the first thing. So you're at least at neutral. And then the things that you're, um, that would be the, the first thing I do to clear that up. And then, you know, I would flip it back to flip it back to what Hody said. And then it, it, at work, just, you know, figure out a way to structure your time. So that way you can, uh, so that way you can, hit it hard, plan out your meals, plan out whatever it is that you need to do in, in your life to make it work, and then have those two days or whatever to recharge and come back to it. I think that's that's huge. So that those would be my final thoughts. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. I just, I know so many people that uh, they half-ass work and then they also half-ass recreation. And it's just, huh. I, I feel bad for them. I, I mean, at work, they're pieces of garbage and I hate dealing with them. But I almost, I mean, I pity them based on their home life because they're constantly trying to catch up and chase things. You know, it's, it's just a rough, rough go for all of them. But yeah, if you find yourself in that situation, uh, dear, dear listener, please, uh, please, please do something about it. You know, I know Dale's very open uh, to talking with people. He, I mean, he has a whole podcast called Simplistic Advice. So if you want some simple advice about how to attack that, you know, tune in. Ask Dale. I'm sure uh, he's part of the Wall Network now. So if you want to throw it into the We Are Libertarians ether and uh, and there, I'm sure that word will get around to him, and he'd love to help you out and and design a a, a strategy for you. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I appreciate you tuning in, Dale. Always a pleasure to talk with you, my friend. It is, and same to you, Hody. Yeah. You guys have a great day, and keep fueling the fires of liberty. <laughs>